embarrassing enough. Uh, I don't need to go on too much. Um, so, uh, ich lerne Deutsch, aber mein Deutsch ist doch nicht so gut. So, maybe I better speak in English, as we said. Uh, so, you've heard uh, many, many times tonight uh, the original vision for Wikipedia, which is for all of us to imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. So this is the, the original vision statement uh, for Wikipedia. And what is Wikipedia really? Uh, well, you've heard a lot about it tonight, um, but there are several elements to the dream of Wikipedia uh, that I think are worth repeating. Uh, one of the things that I always say is free access to the sum of all human knowledge. What do I mean by that, by free access? Well, part of what I mean is something that a lot of people don't really realize or understand, which is that everything in Wikipedia is freely licensed, meaning that people have the right to copy it, to modify it, to redistribute it, to redistribute modified versions. People can do all of these things commercially or non-commercially. So when people are contributing to Wikipedia, they aren't just contributing to this one humanitarian project. They're contributing to a storehouse of knowledge which can be reused and repurposed in all kinds of ways. And this has made some really interesting things possible all around the world. Uh, not long ago, I was in South Africa, and I met a young man who had made it his hobby to take copies of Wikipedia articles on uh, CD-ROM or DVD, and he would go, and he, he had about 20 schools. He would go to these schools and install a recent version of Wikipedia on the computers in the computer labs. Uh, these schools had uh, computers uh, that the students were able to use, but they didn't have internet. Or if they did have internet, it was too expensive to allow the students to use it. He didn't have to ask anyone permission to do that. That's part of the license. It's completely um, open for anyone to do. You can download the entire database. So that free access model is something that's very, very important to us. That this is not a proprietary project. This is for everyone to use in any way that they want. Another aspect of Wikipedia is that it is the sum of all human knowledge. And this has been really core to the idea. Uh, Wikipedia is not... Uh, chat board, it's not a message board, it's not an archive or a library or a textbook. Everyone has this very simple and clear idea of what an encyclopedia is, and that clear and very simple vision, which we've talked to from the very beginning, is part of what makes it possible for so many people to work together uh, in a positive fashion. If I say uh, encyclopedia entry about uh, the Eiffel Tower, everyone in this room has a pretty good idea of what's supposed to be in there. Of course, as Wikipedians, we can all argue endlessly over exactly what it should say. Uh, but in, in the end, we have a good idea of what we're working towards, and we know how to work together to do this. So the amazing thing about Wikipedia is the scale of what we've managed to accomplish. Uh, today, there are over 16 million entries. Uh, we are in over 270 different languages. Um, although, uh, for me, I think that saying 270 different languages overstates the situation and minimizes the work that we have ahead. And I'm going to talk a little bit more in a moment about uh, where we stand today. In August, we had 408 million people visiting the website. Uh, this is a number that I cannot get my head around, uh, no matter how hard I try. Um, but it's been a really amazing phenomenon to me. Uh, I travel all over the world. I meet with Wikipedians. Uh, I travel. One of the things that I uh, enjoy doing is going to visit uh, schools, uh, particularly in the developing world. And it's an amazing thing to go. Uh, I was in a, a slum in India, in uh, Sanyo Bihar, in Delhi. It's a squatter colony, and I met a young man who told me uh, that he used Wikipedia to pass his 11th grade exams. Uh, this is an amazing thing to see, uh, standing on a street, uh, you know, with, with mud in the street, and it's just a classic scene of uh, poor uh, India. Um, and yet, he had access to Wikipedia, and it had changed his life in some small way. That's an astounding thing to contemplate. It's something that our community is really, really proud of. The community is really the most important thing. Wikipedia could not exist were it not for the Wikipedians, the really passionate people, the core community, the people who really put Wikipedia together are the ones who make it work. If we didn't have those people, if people treated it lightly, if they weren't serious about creating something of high quality that they can be really proud of, Wikipedia would be uh, simply a message board or a place full of noise and arguing. But instead, we've brought together an amazing group of people who are very, very passionate about um, making Wikipedia what it is today. So who are they? Uh, that's always a really good question. And so uh, this past summer, uh, every year we have our, uh, our annual conference where we bring 
uh, volunteers together from all over the world. Uh, usually it's around 600 people come. And this past year we made some uh, videos uh, and interviewed a lot of the Wikipedians who came just to ask them about the project and ask them how they felt. You saw some of that in the, in the introductory video earlier, uh, but I'm going to show you a little bit more uh, today just to give you a little bit more of a feel of who the Wikipedians are. So we're going to go here and hopefully the sound is on and all that. Uh, no, I don't have superpowers. At all. No. You can, you can totally do it. I push the button and save the text. Ooh. <laughs> it was uh, exciting. You just changed Wikipedia. You just added your own contribution to Wikipedia. I read an article in The Guardian about this online encyclopedia which everybody can contribute to. And I thought, whoa, maybe I can contribute too as well. I edited it the first time and I think I got addicted to it. I don't get paid anything. I just do it for, you know, something that to do in my free time, that's it. You might start doing it for an idea because you believe in it, but you end up with friends, you end up with lovers, you end up with wonderful discussions, you end up with new ideas, you end up with the new books you're going to write. You're not writing the article alone. You write a piece and somebody else goes like, hey, I have more, and together you can create articles that are pages long, which you can't buy yourself. Then you have success. You always see, okay, what I've done was successful, and this is one of, this is great, because, so, editing is, is a great feeling, every time you do it. As I say, when I read about Wikipedia, I decided, this is maybe where I would fit in, and I did. As you can see, they're very passionate about it. They have a lot of fun with it. It's something that people can do uh, that, that makes them feel they've spent their time in a productive way. And I think one of the real lessons of Wikipedia is that the vast majority of people are actually very nice people. Uh, they really just want to help. Uh, we understand this in day-to-day -day life. Uh, we meet people and you, you sort of expect, uh, you know, anyone you come up to uh, in a cocktail party after the ceremony, and they'll be a perfectly nice person. But somehow online, uh, we have this idea that, oh, the, the general public is kind of crazy and dangerous and there's a lot of really bad people. Well, it turns out there are a few really bad people and they're extremely annoying and we have to deal with them. But most people are like this. Most people say, oh, this is something good. This is something that I would like to help with. And it's a really valuable thing. It's really uh, incredibly uh, uplifting to see the dedication that people have. Another remarkable thing about our project is that we are a foundation. The Wikimedia Foundation is the nonprofit organization that I set up uh, to own and operate Wikipedia. We exist, uh, we have no advertising on the site, we exist solely from donations. Uh, we get uh, the vast majority of the money that we get to run Wikipedia is from the small donors. Uh, it's from people who are reading the site, and every year in December we ask people to please donate money. And this year, over half a million people donated money. Uh, sometimes uh, they, they donate uh, uh, $5 or $10 or $20. Sometimes they donate $5,000. You just don't know who's going to donate what. But it's the small donors who really uh, make up the backbone and the funding of Wikipedia. This is really important to me for a couple of reasons. Uh, of course, we very much appreciate the larger donors, of course. Uh, <laughs> which is very nice. Uh, uh, as an example, Google gave us $2 million, no strings attached. Uh, but, you know, Google can afford it. Uh, they've got a little money. Um, but the important thing about having lots of small donors is it, is it preserves the independence of the community. It preserves the independence of these people you saw. No one ever says, gee, we actually have to change something because the donors want a change. Uh, some big important donor, we have to adjust something to suit them. That never comes up. Instead, we have to serve the general public. As long as the public likes Wikipedia, they come, they use it, they love it, they think it's really great, then they'll give a small amount of money and it's enough to keep us going. Um, and that's what I think is really, really important. So what about the future? Uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about lately uh, and reflecting on is that, um, as you've heard tonight, we've just passed our 10th anniversary. So we've been at this for 10 years, and of course there's lots of celebrations about what we've accomplished, but it also turns my mind towards the future. And I believe that our real humanitarian impact is yet to come. We've obviously made a major impact on the lives of people in wealthy countries, uh, in speaking the languages of Europe, uh, speaking uh, Japanese, for example. But I think that the next wave is where things are really going to dramatically impact the world. If we look at the projections, in the next five to ten years, 
the next billion people are going to come online. They're not coming online from Europe or America or Japan. They're coming online in, in massive numbers in China, in India, South America, and even in Africa. And this is going to have a really radical impact on those places in the world. One of the things that we're doing is we're increasingly turning our focus to thinking about how do we help the communities who are in these places to build Wikipedia in their own language. And just to give um, uh, an example, so we are, we are going to be opening our first office outside the United States in India this year. Uh, and the reason that we've chosen India for this is because, uh, not because India is so far behind, but because India is actually a place of great hope and promise for Wikipedia. Um, if we look at the number of entries that we have in, in many different languages, Hindi, for example, 67,000, Telugu, 47,000, Marathi, 32,000, Tamil, 27,000, Bengali, 22,000. So these are existing communities in India, these are very passionate communities in India. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to go to India um, and speak at a university because um, the Indian college students are absolutely insane about Wikipedia. They love it. I mean, it's completely, uh, they're incredibly passionate about it, in part because for the first time, uh, they're building up this knowledge base in their language. A lot of people in India who are working online are doing so in English, um, and they're really excited about the possibility of bringing this next wave to India for all of the people in India who don't speak English. Uh, one of the interesting things about India, a lot of people have the impression that, oh, well, they all speak English. No, not really. Uh, about 40 to 80 million people speak English, uh, depending on how you measure it. Uh, that means basically another billion people who don't speak a word of English, um, and these are the ones who are beginning to build Wikipedia in their own language. So we're going to open an office there, we're going to help them solve technical problems, we're going to help them with publicity and, and getting the word out, because many times uh, people don't realize that Wikipedia exists in their own language, and that's something that uh, is really exciting for me, that we hopefully will accelerate the growth in India. But then we come to Africa, uh, which is a much harder problem, and, and it's a very interesting thing to look in Africa. Uh, we basically have two languages, Swahili and Afrikaans, that are substantial projects that are successful. Uh, Afrikaans, of course, is uh, essentially Old Dutch, it's a colonial language. Uh, in terms of an indigenous language, Swahili is the only one that we have a really successful project in. And what's interesting about this, and something to really think about and to contemplate, is that in Swahili there has never before been an encyclopedia, period. Uh, so there we're not thinking about how does Wikipedia compare to Brockhaus or Britannica? There we're thinking about how can we bring knowledge to people who've never really had this form of knowledge in the past before at all. And one of the things that we are seeing is that waves and waves and waves of people are coming online, and when they come online, they want knowledge in their own language. It's really, really important. And I think that we're going to see some remarkable changes to society. We already are seeing this, um, oh, I wanted to say, Wolof is the next language uh, down. Uh, Wolof, you've probably never heard of. It's a language in Senegal. Uh, but you can see the big drop down to this. Beyond that, below that, we have um, a handful of languages that have, uh, Zulu has uh, 208 entries, um, which I'm excited about. That's about double what it was a year ago. So, you know, if you double every year, you get somewhere eventually. Um, but we have a big challenge there, because these are not even existing communities. Uh, we don't really know how to help them. And a big part of it is they're waiting for connectivity. But there's some really amazing things going on in Africa. Uh, just uh, in June, no, July of this year, uh, they turned on a new uh, undersea cable that goes into Nigeria from Europe. And overnight, when they turned this cable on, it increased the total bandwidth to Nigeria by a factor of 10. What does this mean for, uh, across, across Africa? Because it's, it comes into Nigeria, but of course it goes everywhere. It means that wholesale broadband prices are collapsing. The cost of getting on the internet is coming down very, very quickly. People there have mobile phones, but most of the mobile phones that they have are very basic phones. They don't have smartphones. They certainly don't have Android phones or iPhones. But guess what? Those are coming very quickly as well. When we look at an innovation like the iPad uh, from Apple, amazing product, quite inexpensive, uh, well, for Apple, uh, it's quite expensive. <laughs> I don't expect Apple to be a leader in low-cost computing in the developing world. That's just not who they are. That's not what they do. But what they do is they're, they're working at the high end of the market and they're showing us a glimpse of the future. We're going to see very inexpensive, uh, you know, under $100 uh, replicas 
of the iPad running an open source software 